Hey everyone, today we're going to continue on our road to improvement and we're going to talk about layering. It's a toll road. Tolls are likes, subscribes, bell rings, you know, all the algorithm stuff. So, I'm Mandy. I'm Ben. And I'm Dan. And this is Mandy's Mini. Acrylics are translucent. So what that means is they're a little bit see-through. When you have an opaque color, it's quite solid. So when you put down your, your base coat, you put it down a little bit thick, and you usually put down two coats to make sure that you get a nice solid foundation. Your primer is gonna be a nice solid foundation. But when you put the paint over it, since it's translucent, you still see that color underneath. So to combat that, we have to put on more layers so that the color you're trying to cover up gets covered all the way. The more layers, the more vibrant and the more opaque the paint becomes. That's why by now you probably have heard two thin coats. That's not always the hard and fast rule, but more often than not, it's what works. And that's why that catchphrase has caught on so well. So when it comes to layering, the idea of layering, we're taking our shadow color, which is gonna be our darkest color, putting our mid-tone over it, and then putting a lighter color over that for our highlights. So you can see where uh, multiple coats can become required to build up to the full opacity of each color. Now the other thing we're gonna do with this is if you notice, if you put one color right over the other, you're gonna get these hard lines. Um, it's gonna look like the steps. So what we do to combat that is we actually mix the colors together. So by creating a 50-50 mix up thereabouts of your shadow color and your mid-tone, you can actually get an in-between color that your eye will just naturally fill in the blanks to make that blend together. So it makes a softer transition when you're layering even though you're not using any solid blending techniques, you're just putting layers up. So you wanna make sure your layers never jump from one extreme to the other. You wanna get those nice in-between shades down so that you get that transition from light into the darker. Now, that being said, we're going to see if I can teach you how to actually put that theory in practice by teaching those two knuckleheads and uh, hopefully having some fun along the way. So let's get to it. Okay, so what we actually do to make the uh, global shadow color and your mid-tone match is we blend them together. So we started with, so you always have this way, you'd have two shadow colors and two highlight colors because you're gonna have the blue and then you're gonna have the mix of the eggplant and blue for your shadows. So it, it gradually goes from blue into eggplant. So you're gonna mix those two colors on your palette for your second? I mix those on the palette. Okay. And then that's where we're at in the video is I'm applying that, that essentially second shadow color, which is the blue mixed with eggplant 50, 50 so that it's that exact mix between the two to, you know, guide your eye into looking it looking natural. So with the, with the blue that you did first, are you still doing two layers of that blue to get it 
to get it to full opacity right, of yeah. the blue. And then you're going to do a purple blue mix. And I'm going to do two shades layers of the two layers of that. All right. But remember, I'm still going to leave some of the blue showing in the deepest recesses. Right. You got to be smaller. Each one smaller. Right. Right. <sighs> And that's actually another good trick for kind of blending even further is the second coat I do of the 50-50 uh, mix, I do a little bit less. So there's actually three jumps in there, but only mixed two different, you know, the two paints once. But by doing a little bit less, that means that there's still a little bit more of a transition. Two different layer sizes of the second color. Right. So how do you do with without having a visible edge of those colors? For example, like learning, we talked about before about what they show you in a book versus reality. So like I've seen where they've, They'll tell you like are they doing a skin tone and then but their illustration shows a hard edge and it's like well then how does that not look like the guy's got a birthmark or something you know or why there's a delineation between those or because your paint is thin enough it kind of because your paint is you're using thinner coats right it's translucent paint. Right. So a little bit of that previous layer is still showing through somewhat. And that's what builds up your vibrancy okay. so that you get a full vibrant figure. So like when I've tried to do, say, like three shades of the same color, because I didn't do that, that second with the mix of the two, you got more of a hard edge color change than a transition. Right. Okay. So that's the key step here with layering is you have to do more of a gradual step um, so that the layers actually blend to your eye. And now we're switching to the pure eggplant on this one. And you can see that it's a brighter color on my paintbrush. And that's because there is none of that blue in there. And since your mid-tone covers the majority of the model, the majority of what you see is mid-tone, it still feels like you're just doing that next itty-bitty little step. Whereas when we get to the highlights after the mid-tone, you're going to see huge jumps where the highlights are only small areas. Okay. You're still going on the high spots, like the, the right. crest of a, ro of a wrinkle. Right. In the robe. Because the eggplant is actually so thin and the, um, the navy is so dark, two coats didn't get it up to full opacity. So in a moment, I'm going to go through and do a third layer of that base coat or of that not base coat a third layer of that mid-tone so that it actually reaches that full color that i expected it to be and the mid-tone is your 50 -50. right and now what i'm doing is the highlights and that is a 50 50 of the eggplant and my ice yellow On very, very small areas. Very small areas, just the top of the head and the side facing towards where the light is. And then the sleeve on the arms. Because anything below that, the light fades away as you get further down. What did you think of the uh, process of layering? I have it shown in this fact that it isn't just an immediate transition to the next color. That blending thing was never anything I saw before of mixing the next lighter one with it 50, 50 ish and and then going next. That to me that was the big reveal. Yeah, and the fact that um layering and blending kind of go you can kind of do them together, you know, with the, the 50 50 mixes and 
things like that is, is pretty cool. Seems like it's the entry level blending kind of a thing. You know, right. Versus you know, wet blending or whatever. Exactly. Feathering. And yeah. 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 I really like how it is. In fact, I'll, I'll probably take that to Indy just for. And I'm, I'm very happy with mine. It'll stand up in the case, you know, our showcase very nicely next to yours. It may not be as good as yours, but I'm perfectly happy with it. I guess remember your light source in it because you wouldn't necessarily do all the levels of the color on the shadow side as you might on the bright side because you're going to have maybe one more color you know let's say you you had three you know the dark the medium and the high or well, maybe the one side doesn't have as much or the third highest color because it's darker yeah definitely um and remember the 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 valleys and the because i know i got flip-flopped on one of them and i ended up like totally painting over my whole previous layer and i lost the whole effect it's like oh darn it i gotta start i gotta do that one over again you know that ridge yeah definitely uh, remembering smaller layers each time than the last one and i think just the the biggest part is it's not hard. Anybody can do it. We haven't mentioned this in a while, but it's just paint. Yeah. I mean, what, the worst thing that happens is, you know, you, you paint the you paint the same place for an hour. You make a big bulge of paint and it looks awful and you strip it back off and start over. Right. It's all only paint. Well, and so I would say if you're trying a, a new technique, don't try it on your your really good mini, you know. It's like have a test meal or something. Definitely. You know? And, and uh, you know, just get some of the initial hiccups not out of the way, but aware of what could happen to you. You know, whether you, you painted too far down and obliterated one of your colors or something. So we're going to wrap it up here. As always. Have fun and keep creating. <laughs>